Hi there, health enthusiasts. Have you ever wondered about the importance of insulin and fat cells in our body? Well, buckle up because we're about to dive into a fascinating world that's often misunderstood. Let's start with insulin. It's not just a hormone. It's a key player in our body's energy storage system. When we eat, our body breaks down the food into glucose, a type of sugar that our body uses for energy. Insulin is then released into the bloodstream to help cells absorb this glucose. But here's the kicker. Insulin also signals our fat cells to store energy and grow. That's right, the size of our fat cells is not just about how many calories we're eating, it's also about our insulin levels. This is a revelation that challenges the traditional calorie-centric perspective on weight gain. One of the leading researchers in this field is Dr. Ben Bickman, a professor and metabolic scientist. His work has shed light on the pivotal role of insulin in fat cell growth. According to Dr. Bickman, fat cells can't expand without elevated insulin levels. So if we're looking to manage body fat and improve metabolic health, understanding this mechanism is crucial. But what about the fat cells themselves? Well, they're not the villains they're often made out to be. In fact, they play an essential role in our body's energy management. They store energy for times of need and release it when our body requires extra fuel. However, problems can arise when insulin levels remain consistently high. This can cause fat cells to expand excessively, leading to a host of metabolic health issues. But more on that later. So insulin plays a pivotal role in the growth of fat cells. It's not all about the calories. It's also about the hormonal signals our bodies are sending and receiving. This understanding opens up new ways of thinking about body fat, weight management, and overall health. And this is just the beginning, so stay tuned as we delve deeper into this fascinating topic. Now, let's delve into the dangers associated with belly fat. Belly fat, also known as visceral fat, is a type of body fat that's stored within the abdominal cavity. Its unique position in our body makes it particularly dangerous. You see, it's nestled around vital organs like the liver, pancreas, and intestines. This close proximity to our vital organs has a direct and consequential impact on our health. This is not your average fat. Unlike the subcutaneous fat that's stored in the hips and buttocks, visceral fat is metabolically active. What does this mean? It means that this fat doesn't just sit there. It's busy producing substances that can significantly affect our health. These substances contribute to serious health issues, such as heart disease and cancer. It can also lead to diabetes, and in severe cases, early death. The close proximity of this fat to our liver can lead to fatty liver disease, a condition that is becoming increasingly common and concerning. But one of the most significant dangers of visceral fat is its role in the development of insulin resistance. Insulin resistance is a condition where the cells in our body become less responsive to insulin. This leads to higher levels of insulin and glucose in the blood, a condition that over time can progress to type 2 diabetes. When we have type 2 diabetes, our body is characterized by chronically high blood sugar levels. This condition significantly increases the risk of cardiovascular disease, neuropathy, and a host of other severe health complications. So, it's not just about the mirror image. The dangers of belly fat go well beyond surface level. They delve deep into our body, affecting our most vital organs, disrupting our metabolic health, and potentially leading to life-threatening conditions. So, when we talk about the need to manage belly fat, it's not just about looking good. It's about feeling good, maintaining our health, and prolonging our life. The dangers of belly fat are not just about aesthetics. It's a serious health concern. But how does insulin resistance develop? Let's break it down. The story begins in our fat cells, particularly those huddled around the central region of our bodies. When these cells grow too large, a process known as hypertrophy, their ability to grow further becomes limited. This limitation is the first step towards insulin resistance. Now you might be wondering, why does an increase in size lead to resistance? Well, as these fat cells grow larger, they become less responsive to insulin signals. This lack of response means that glucose, which our cells use for energy, can't be efficiently stored in these fat cells. This is where things start to get complicated. Because the glucose can't be stored, it remains in our blood. In response, our bodies produce even more insulin, trying to get these unresponsive cells to take in the glucose. But alas, to no avail. 
This results in elevated levels of insulin in our blood, a condition known as hyperinsulinemia. But wait, there's more, you see. Insulin isn't just involved in glucose storage. It also plays a role in fat storage. When insulin levels are high, our bodies are signaled to store more fat, particularly in those same fat cells that are growing too large and becoming insulin resistant. This further exacerbates the problem, leading to a cycle of increasing insulin resistance and fat storage. And to add insult to injury, as these fat cells continue to grow and store more fat, they begin to release fatty acids into the bloodstream. These fatty acids can cause systemic inflammation, contributing to the overall metabolic dysfunction we see in insulin resistance. So, in essence, insulin resistance is a product of a vicious cycle. Fat cells grow too large, become less responsive to insulin, leading to elevated levels of insulin and fatty acids in the blood. This promotes further fat storage and increases systemic inflammation, furthering the cycle of insulin resistance. Insulin resistance can turn into a vicious cycle, promoting more fat storage and inflammation. And this, my friends, is how insulin resistance develops. What makes visceral fat more dangerous than subcutaneous fat? This question leads us to a deep dive into the unique characteristics and impact of visceral fat. The primary factor that sets visceral fat apart is its higher metabolic activity. Unlike the relatively dormant subcutaneous fat, visceral fat is always on the go. It's like a busy factory, churning out various substances that can have profound effects on our health. This heightened metabolic activity is why visceral fat can have a greater impact on our health than its subcutaneous counterpart. One of the most significant processes that occur within visceral fat cells is hypertrophy. This is a fancy term for the enlargement of fat cells. Instead of multiplying to accommodate more fat, these cells just keep growing in size. Picture a balloon being filled with air. It doesn't multiply, it just expands. However, this expansion can lead to problems. As the cells grow, they can push away from capillaries, the tiny blood vessels that supply them with oxygen. This can cause hypoxia, or low oxygen levels within the cells. Hypoxia is like trying to run a factory with a power outage. It disrupts the normal functioning of the cells and can lead to increased inflammation. While a natural response to injury or infection can be harmful when it becomes chronic. In the case of visceral fat, the enlarged cells release inflammatory proteins that can spread throughout the body. These proteins not only contribute to inflammation, but can also promote insulin resistance. This is a condition where the body's cells become less responsive to the hormone insulin, leading to higher levels of both insulin and glucose in the blood. These higher levels can further promote the growth of visceral fat, creating a vicious cycle of metabolic dysfunction. Visceral fat's impact goes beyond its location. Its metabolic activity is a key concern. By understanding the unique characteristics and impacts of visceral fat, we can better appreciate why managing this type of fat is so crucial for our overall health. Are fat cells all bad? Let's find out. Fat cells, often vilified, are actually quite essential. They've been designed to serve very important roles in our bodies. For starters, they store energy. Think of them as your body's savings account, holding onto excess calories for a rainy day. When the body needs an energy boost, say, during a rigorous workout or when food is scarce, it taps into these reserves. But it's not just about energy storage. Fat cells also provide insulation. They form a protective layer that helps maintain body temperature, keeping you warm when it's cold outside. They're like a cozy blanket, wrapping around your organs and protecting them from the chill. Perhaps one of their most significant roles is as hormone factories. They secrete essential hormones like estrogen and leptin. Leptin is particularly important as it signals to your brain that you've eaten enough promoting a feeling of fullness or satiety. It's also linked to fertility, indicating to the body that there are sufficient energy stores for reproduction. During periods of calorie deprivation, fat cells become crucial for survival. They provide a reservoir of energy, allowing the body to continue functioning when food intake is low. In this sense, they're like a backup generator, kicking into gear when the main power source is unavailable. Their endocrine function extends beyond this, after menopause, for instance, fat cells become the primary source of estrogen production in women. This highlights the importance of fat cells beyond mere energy storage. 
They play a critical role in maintaining hormonal balance and managing the effects of menopause. So you see, fat cells are not all bad. In fact, they're quite necessary for our overall well-being. Understanding their function and importance can help us maintain a healthy body. They're like a team of unsung heroes, working behind the scenes to keep us in tip-top shape. Fat cells are not the enemy. Understanding their function can help us maintain a healthy body. What causes insulin resistance and what are its effects? This is a question that's been at the forefront of metabolic research. To answer this, let's delve into the causes and effects of insulin resistance, the silent precursor to a host of metabolic diseases. Insulin resistance is a condition where cells in your body start ignoring signals from insulin, a hormone that instructs cells to absorb glucose from your bloodstream. This lack of response to insulin is often triggered by prolonged exposure to high levels of insulin in the blood, a state known as hyperinsulinemia. This can be caused by a diet high in sugar and refined carbs, lack of exercise, stress, or a combination of these factors. When cells become resistant to insulin, they fail to take in enough glucose. This leaves both glucose and insulin lingering in your bloodstream. Over time, your pancreas works overtime, producing more insulin to compensate for the resistance, leading to chronically elevated insulin levels. This persistent high insulin level, even before glucose levels rise, can be a major contributor to various diseases. Now, let's discuss the effects of insulin resistance. The excessive insulin in your bloodstream doesn't just stay idle. It prompts your body to store more fat, especially around your waist, leading to weight gain and obesity. It also plays a significant role in the development of polycystic ovary syndrome, a common cause of infertility in women. Moreover, insulin resistance has been linked to cognitive decline and Alzheimer's disease, often referred to as type 3 diabetes. It's also a key player in the development of non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, a condition where fat accumulates in your liver, impairing its function. In the face of these potential health threats, it's crucial that we shift our focus to an insulin-centric view of health. By paying attention to insulin levels, not just glucose, we can detect metabolic issues earlier, before they escalate into full-blown diabetes or other serious conditions. This approach paves the way for early intervention, helping us address the root cause of many metabolic disorders. Recognizing insulin resistance early can be the key to preventing a host of metabolic disorders. So, what have we learned today? Our journey has taken us deep into the world of insulin, fat cells, and their pivotal roles in our metabolic health. We've unraveled the complex mechanisms that govern their interactions and their influence on our body's energy storage and growth. We've discovered that insulin is not just a hormone, but a key player in signaling fat cells to store energy, challenging the traditional calorie-centric view of weight gain we dove into the dangers of belly fat, also known as visceral fat, and its proximity to our vital organs. This type of fat is not just about aesthetics. It's a ticking time bomb that contributes to serious health issues such as heart disease, cancer, diabetes, and even early death. We've learned that it's not the fat on the outside that we need to worry about, but the fat on the inside, the one that can compress our organs, leading to severe metabolic problems. We've also delved into the development of insulin resistance, a condition that occurs when our cells become less responsive to insulin. This resistance results in elevated levels of insulin and fatty acids in the blood, promoting further fat storage and increasing systemic inflammation. This vicious cycle exacerbates metabolic health issues and contributes to diseases like type 2 diabetes. We've also learned about the impact of visceral fat and how it's more dangerous due to its higher metabolic activity. We discovered that it grows through a process called hypertrophy, pushing cells away from capillaries, causing low oxygen levels and increasing inflammation. This inflammation contributes to insulin resistance throughout the body, further promoting metabolic dysfunction. Finally, we've understood the importance of fat cells beyond mere energy storage. These cells are crucial for survival during periods of calorie deprivation and are essential in secreting hormones such as estrogen and leptin, highlighting the importance of an insulin-centric view of health. Understanding insulin and fat cells is not just about weight management. It's about preventing serious health complications and promoting overall metabolic health. Until next time, stay healthy, stay safe, and stay informed.